Hi everyone. Um, so I have never done a product review for YouTube before, but I've always found it really useful when I find a new product um, that I'm looking at getting or I want some more information on um, to have a look and see if anyone's reviewed it before. Um, and you know, that might be for things like vacuums, blenders, whatever. Um, but I noticed that there's not many reviews for this particular product, the Close Comfort, uh, available online. Um, so I thought I would try and help out. I've had this product for over a year now um, and I really enjoy it. Um, I feel really positively about the product and the company uh, that are creating it. So I thought I would create this to give you a bit more of an overview perhaps. Um, I just want to mention as well that this isn't sponsored. Um, I haven't been contacted by Close Comfort to make it. I genuinely wanted to make this because I really do like this product. So to give you a bit of an overview about where I'm using this, um, I'm currently in Darwin where it is, I believe, 31 degrees and 65% humidity outside. Um, I have used this product in Adelaide where I lived previously. So um, I have used it in two different types of heat, being humid and dry heat. Um, and I think it performs amazingly in both, but the standout is definitely in humid heat because it is a refrigerated uh, unit. Um, it removes the humidity from the air there. So um, at the moment, I've got a wireless thermometer inside of the tent um, and I've got something here telling me the ambient temperature in the room. So top is inside the tent and bottom is ambient temperature. So it's saying that it's 30 degrees 0.5 inside and 24.9 inside the tent. Now I turned on the unit probably 15 minutes ago and that has uh, dropped steadily since. So I would say another half an hour and it would be 10 degrees cooler than the ambient temperature. Um, and that's what I would get on average um, every time I use it. Um, I think they do advertise up to 12 degrees. I haven't reached that. I could be wrong, but I haven't reached that uh, yet. Um, but the 10 degrees, 9, 10 degrees cooler is um, definitely noticeable. So I'll keep an eye on that. And if it does drop by the end of this video, I'll show you that temperature there. So a bit of a walk around the tent and the unit there. Um, I do have the bed tent, uh, which is an optional, um, an optional product to purchase there. Um, I definitely think that you need to have it um, if you were using it for sleeping. So the unit on its own um, would blow a cool breeze over you, but in a room sort of sitting at 30 degrees and then obviously the humidity added to that as well, that cool breeze would get lost. You'd feel it directly on your, you know, on your face or whatever if you were pointing it there, but you would not benefit from that sort of all around um, cooling comfort. So um, I think it's completely important to buy the tent with the unit. Um, obviously it depends on what you're looking at using it for, but if you use it mainly like I do for sleeping, um, yeah, it, it's definitely, definitely worth it. And I think it's about $80 Australian, so it's really not that much more to add on um, if, if that's sort of what you're looking at using it for. So the unit itself um, is quite small. I've got it here on a coffee table. I'm gonna try and find another, uh, another sort of thing to put it on um, because it is gonna kind of be a permanent fixture in the room here. Um, but yeah, it's quite small. It is running at the moment. So you're never going to be able to get an accurate um, sort of sound of it uh, through a video, but it doesn't bother me. I'm the kind of person that enjoys having some white noise while I sleep anyway. Um, if you are the kind of person that really, you need to have a you know quiet, completely quiet environment to sleep, um, it might be a bit bothersome, but it's not like it cuts in and out. Um, it's a constant sound. Um, you know, I'm talking right now uh, in the tent, I could be on a phone call um, and you know, it doesn't bother. No one's sort of saying like, what's that sound in the background? So um, yeah, I don't, I don't even think it's really a problem at all or even something to consider. But I suppose if you are a really light sleeper and you do need um, almost you know, silence to sleep, might be worth considering. Um, but yeah, so this is the back of the unit uh, here. This is where the heat will come out, um, which we'll get onto a little bit later. That is a, um, a point that I think a lot of people, uh, when I read the comments on um, the Facebook page for Close Comfort, 
that is something that people raise um, a few times. I can go into that a little bit more, but um, I'll just continue around. Um, so it has uh, doors like this on each side. Um, I don't want to open it up yet because I am still uh, trying to cool the inside of the tent, um, but it has doors like this on either side. Um, and I do have a sheet over the top, which they recommend doing uh, to keep the cool in. So without the sheet, I'll just lift it up quickly. You can see there's sort of like a mesh there um, that sort of helps the breathable um, factor, I guess. Um, I always have the sheet on because I'm trying to keep humidity out and creating a, um, like a very dry environment inside of the tent there. So um, yeah, that's always on there. Um, and then that's pretty much it really. There isn't anything else to the unit or the tent that really needs to be mentioned. Um, I suppose I would mention as well, I wasn't gonna get into the, the positives and negatives right now, but while I'm on it, I do find the zippable doors a little bit cumbersome because they sort of zip all the way around to the bottom there. So you kind of almost have to completely unzip them to get out. Um, which is a little bit annoying because by unzipping them completely, you do let a lot of the cold air out. Um, it's not as though you've got to wait another half an hour or so for that cold air or the, you know, the cooling effect inside to build up again. But it is sort of like you've really got to undo the whole thing to get out. So um, that's, that's a little bit annoying, I suppose, but it's not, you know, it's not the most annoying thing. I suppose if you're getting up and down all night, um, it would be, but for me, I usually don't wake up in the night, so um, you know, I don't, I don't find it too annoying. But I would hope that if they do uh, look at redesigning the tent or improvements are made, that that door would probably, um, you know, zip maybe down the centre so you can come out the centre or uh, another way. There, I'm not, I'm not sure, but that's one thing I would mention. And I suppose, um, you know, I'm quite young, so it's quite easy for me to sort of jump out even if I do only half open it but if you were a bit older or a little less um, uh, mobile it might be a little bit tricky for you to to get out there um, I don't have a lot of negatives that I want to talk about for this product but that is that is one so um, that's sort of one thing out of the way there while I'm waiting for it to cool down inside before I show you the inside um, I'll talk a little bit about that sort of exhaust and the heat out of the back there um, because like I said, that is, I've noticed people do sort of question that a bit um, during the comments and such on, on Facebook there. But um, I think it is a little bit understated um, on their website and advertising material. It does sort of say like a, a slight trickle that will go up to the roof there. Um, that is a noticeable breeze and um, it is warm. With all of the doors and windows closed in here, it will be noticeably warmer if I go through to the next room. Um, now, I do use the, uh, sorry, I do open the windows and doors um, when I'm using uh, the close comfort there, um, but it, it is worth mentioning that it does increase the temperature of the room. I don't think that um, close comfort were trying to be deceptive with that. Um, they do say it's best when the windows and doors are open um, so, you know, to sort of help, help the um, hot air escape there. Um, I suppose though there are situations like if there's a storm or, um, you know, if it's extremely humid outside and you really don't want to let that come through into the house there, you know, you don't want your carpets or your clothes to get damp, you might choose not to open the windows um, or doors there. So. It is, um, it's sort of a, a bit of a catch-22. Um, it's not enough for me to, to you know, dislike the product or, or feel as though um, I wasn't told the absolute truth. That's definitely not the case at all. Um, the positives far outweigh the negatives um, in terms of that there. So it, it is worth mentioning that I think I was surprised by, by the amount of sort of air and heat that does come out of the back. but. You know, it's it's not it's not a problem for me because I thoroughly enjoy um, the positive sides of this product. So that's sort of one of the other negatives that I was going to mention. There's really there's really not a lot. So um, yeah. So now we'll go inside the tent and I'll sort of demonstrate how that zip uh, works there. Um, so 
it's sort of you've got to you've really got to open the whole thing up there otherwise you're sort of getting in it it's pulled taut there and you I really don't want to um, you know tear the zips or anything like that so um, that's sort of the gist of it there um, on the inside it is really quite large and spacious even now I can feel um, like cold air sort of bellowing out because um, obviously cold air um, sinks to the ground and hot air rises so I can feel that sort of coming out over me there it's really quite refreshing um, but yeah basically this is the inside of the tent um, you know you could sit upright easily without bumping your head um, with two people in here it never feels small because it it doesn't um, you know constraint the size of the mattress so I've got a queen mattress here and it doesn't um, you know it's not sitting on top of the mattress and taking up uh, or you know providing less space than the mattress surface does um, which is why they've got these little ties there which I'll go into in a second but um, yeah so it I never feel claustrophobic or um, you know restricted inside of it there um, you know if I wanted to kneel in inside I'd probably only just graze the top um, myself so yeah um, I'll go into the the fans in a second um, and uh, the little dehumidifier there um, sort of to explain why I've done that but basically that is the inside that goes to the unit there um, and yeah really that's it it's very basic on the inside there's not really a lot to talk about so that's that now my reasoning for having these fans up here uh, is because the unit itself doesn't sort of cast a large um, breeze I would say so it's not um, it's not weak by any means but having it down the end of the bed and then having sort of your head up there um, it will have diffused the breeze quite a bit there so it's more of um, you know you just feel like cold cold air but if you're someone who likes to sort of have moving air um, which um, you know I know I was just saying a moment ago that I don't feel claustrophobic in here but I do even even in an open air sort of situation I do like moving air across me when I sleep so um, yeah I think you know being inside here and you know if you've got two people you might start thinking you you know you're breathing each other's air and all that sort of stuff um, so I sort of looked at a few different things to increase the um, increase the sort of air movement inside and found that these clip fans work really well um, you know they're just out of the way you can see there I've got the the cable running through the zip there um, you don't have to do this um, and I guess it depends on personal preference really um, for sort of if you think that there's not enough air movement inside of here um, I did use it without them and I still slept fine and you know all that but um yeah it was just something I think perhaps even because of the humidity it was nice to have a little bit of an extra breeze um, flowing now the little um, DC um, dehumidifier I've got down there I didn't put that in because I felt as though it was humid inside of the tent um, I put that there number one because I just already had it and you know I didn't really have a place to put it inside um, the apartment that I'm in um, I put it inside because with the uh, with the sheet over the top of the tent um, I like to think that maybe it would create a little bit of a less humid environment inside of the tent um, and therefore, you know, the sheets and the pillows and that sort of stuff aren't sort of getting damp, perhaps mildewy. Um, yeah, uh, I think it I think it does help a little bit. I have it running 24 hours a day, seven days a week inside of it, even at night. Um, and yeah, I think I think it does help. But uh, because the the close comfort unit does um, put out um, dehumidified air or air with less humidity because of the um, the refrigerated cooling system um, you definitely feel less humidity inside of the tent so that's just a little something I added um, because I sort of have this as a bit of a full-time system on the bed I kind of wanted to make sure that I'm protecting it from um, that excess humidity um, so the other thing I'll mention as well is I do have the cool focus uh, attachment on it so just there that normally wouldn't have an extra blue piece ugh, sorry blue piece of plastic um, on there um, I can actually once I finish filming inside I'll 
I'll take the unit off of the um, the back there and sort of show you that. Um, I think it is useful buying that. So without the cool focus, um, the breeze definitely is weaker than it would be without. I think they, I can't remember the exact um, specifics they give online for it, but um, yeah, it, it definitely increases the, the flow of air. Um, and particularly when you're sleeping, if you want that to get sort of, you know, to get more casted towards the end, at the other end of the tent where your heads are, um, I think it's definitely worth it. I can't remember, but it might might be like twenty dollars or something. I think it's definitely worth it um, to purchase there. Um, and yeah, so that's that's basically it. That little flap of um, material there comes with the tent, and I believe that would be there because. Um, the air comes out from there across and um, that's sort of stopping from getting pulled straight in through that vent there um, so yeah once once that's all clipped in it just that's just how it sits there so um, yeah that's that's the inside of the tent um, I'll just quickly go into the little ties here um, the tent does come with a sheet uh, that goes over it gets uh, zipped in these ties here sort of are what help you um you know uh, fit it to the size of your mattress so um i'm not sure if they advertise that it would go on a single um, i think a double would be fine but obviously this just sort of gets pulled in tighter here um but yeah basically you just sort of tighten it to the the um, size of the mattress there and that's fine you could almost leave it off if you really wanted to you know it would just sort of hang down the side of the bed there but i guess i just tie them up because they're there um, but yeah, and then to take off the, the sheet, um, you unzip it from the base of the tent. A little bit cumbersome doing that, but you know, it's, it's not too bad. Um, obviously, depending on where you live, you know, if there's more humidity or you're sweating more, you might want to wash it more often, um, which, you know, could be a little bit more annoying if you're taking it off, um, you know, once a week or so. But um, yeah, it's not. It's not impossible, but I do like having a second person to help me out for that because it can be a little bit tricky um, to do there. So the unit comes with a remote control um, with a few different functions. Um, I don't really, I don't really adjust um, away from 17 degrees because obviously I want the um, the most cooling I can get there. Um, so I don't use sleep, I don't use timer, I don't use auto, I don't change the fan speed either. And then I guess uh, this one here is to, to change the temperature. So um, I'm not really gonna go into this too much because I would say if you're going to purchase this, you would probably do what I do and have it on 17 degrees and high. Um, but you can adjust the the fan speed, which I'll do right now, and you might be able to hear, oh, not that one, um, you might be able to hear the, the difference in sound coming from the unit there, but um, low. Medium. And high. there um, you know I suppose I'll show you just quickly I suppose I can show you how um, and goes up to 30 I've never done that I've never even seen what the air temperature coming out would feel like at that that there um, yeah 17 all the way particularly somewhere like Darwin so yeah um, I guess auto is like it will detect the temperature but yeah I've, I've never looked into it um, that's, yeah, that's it, comes with that there. And then obviously the power button to turn off. So this is the unit here outside of the tent. Um, as I mentioned, I really probably leave it uh, attached to the tent about 90% of the time. Um, it is quite portable. It has little casters on the bottom, which work really well on tiles. Carpet, not so much, but you can sort of lift it up with the little handles just there and move it along um, if you need to. But um, yeah, sometimes I'll take it down to the study while I'm working on the computer or something like that and sort of have it um, pointing on my back there. Um, because it is so portable and because that air is quite cool coming out of it there, it's really good for, um, you know, just moving around spot cooling uh, there, which they definitely advertise to do on the website there. 
Um, so here I've got the, the cool focus attachment. Normally um, it would come with something that just looks like the base there with the sort of grid. Um, but then yeah, obviously this sort of comes with a molded piece of plastic that fits inside of that piece there. So I'll just pop that in there now so you can see. Uh, like that and then just there. And what I'll do as well is I've got my little thermometer here. I'll see if I can place that inside of it without falling out and um, have a look and see if that temperature drops while I just finish this off there. So we're looking at 30 and uh, 30.4 and 29.2. So the 29.2 is the um, where that's now gone into the the um, outlet for the cool air. So we'll watch that as the video goes on. Um, so uh, basically that's that's the end of the, the sort of walk around for it. Um, I've sort of given you the negatives that I've, I've found with it, but now it's time for the positives. Um, the biggest is that uh, I think is the energy saving and sort of therefore cost saving. So the unit itself is a little bit of money um, outright and I can appreciate that that isn't suitable for everybody. Um, but I was really interested in this product when I saw it um, advertised um, and sort of immediately knew it's something that I would enjoy having. So for me, um, I am quite an energy conscious person. I don't really use dryers. I don't really use split systems if I can avoid it. I'm more of a fan type of person. Um, and I never really slept sound um, or comfortably knowing if I was using a split system or a, you know, an air conditioner. Um, because it's sort of like, oh, how much is it going to cost? And, you know, one night's okay or two nights okay, but when you're looking at somewhere like Darwin where it's consistently hot um, and humid for six months of the year, thereabouts, um, you know, that would really start to add up. And that is sort of one of the biggest complaints that people have living in a place like Darwin is the energy costs because you really can't sleep without an air conditioner. So um, by having this, um, this unit here and this setup, I can sleep completely sound. I don't worry about the costs um, of running it. Um, you might have noticed, sorry, may have noticed in the tent there, I have like a full doona. I don't use a sheet, sometimes I will, but I have like a full doona um, there and I can use that. So it's like I'm sleeping in um, like a perfectly cool temperature. I don't get overheated using a doona or anything like that. Um, yeah, so that, that definitely is the biggest positive for me. Um, just sleeping sound, you know, like I guess I did put out a bit of money in the, the initial sort of outlay for purchasing it. And you could question, well, how much, you know, how long could you run an air conditioner for before you use that sort of, uh, you know, before you made back your money or use the same amount of money, sorry, for uh, the unit. But um, I would say I get so much more peace and satisfaction out of knowing that it's going to cost me um, a couple of cents and, and that's the truth so I'm not going to go into the specifics of the the um, running costs for it because it will change depending on your energy tariffs um, here in Darwin there's only one energy provider um, and then the energy cost is sort of what it is there but I've worked out that it's a couple of cents a night I think like probably I think it was about 30 cents I'd worked out versus um you know in fact i've even got a split system up on the wall so it's not as though i i didn't have air conditioning in this room um, but versus using a split system where you're looking at potentially a couple of dollars a night um, depending on the temperature you've got it set to and everything so that there is definitely the biggest um the biggest thing that i find i enjoy from it but it's not even like it's a compromise using this compared to a split system as i said on the inside um, i use a doona i i never sweat i never wake up in a sweat um, you know like it, it is completely comfortable um, and you know I, su I suppose it depends on how you see it um, when i'm asleep i don't know the size of the room that i'm in you know i've got my eyes closed i'm out of it um, so for me, I would say, I don't care that I'm sleeping inside of a tent. As long as that space around me is comfortable, as long as I can get a really good night's sleep, wake up refreshed, I'll sleep inside of a tent. Um, but it's not even a compromise compared to um, a split system. It's just, I, I would say, another way of doing it. 
uh, where you can monitor the costs and you can sleep soundly knowing that it's not going to be um, you know an exorbitant expense at the end of your quarter uh, for a bill so um, yeah that that is definitely the the biggest the biggest thing I also just really enjoy the fact that this is an Australian product an Australian company sort of a startup um, and that they've taken this leap and, and tried to make this product. Well, not tried, they've succeeded making this product. Um, I think there is an application for it, probably not for everybody. Um, you know, buying a couple of them for each room of the house, you know, children and that sort of stuff probably isn't suitable. Um, but it's an amazing concept, it's an amazing idea, um, and it's really well executed, and particularly because it's the first model of it. I don't know if they're intending on making um, you know, improvements or better versions of it or anything like that. But um, I think it's fantastic that they've gone out and they've done this. Um, and, you know, because it's so portable, you can use it in different areas of the house or even outdoors. Sometimes I have actually dragged it out onto the balcony um, and used it while I was cooking a barbecue. And it was just nice to have somewhere I could sort of poke my face into every now and then to just cool down a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's really, really good. Um, the only other thing that I would mention that's sort of a bit of a negative, and this is purely depending on sort of how you feel about it, is that the tent is a little bit cumbersome, you know, like it, um, it is large, it is a little bit unsightly, like I've got a nice sort of bed frame here with a, a fabric bed head, I don't see that because I've got this tent on it, um, it does sort of, um, you know, when you've got friends or, or guests over and they see it, you, do, you know, you do get a few sort of, oh, what's that? Um, you know, and sometimes people don't, you know, they don't really get the idea of it and they might think it's a bit stupid. Um, you know, people, you know, sleeping in a tent, but you're not outdoors kind of thing. Um, I really enjoy telling people about the product um, and why I love it so much. So it doesn't bother me too much, but I guess um, it does sort of, it is in the room, it's present and, you know, especially with the sheets that have draped over it. It does look a little bit, a little bit um, tacky, I suppose, but, you know, I don't spend a lot of time in the bedroom. I've got a beautiful balcony um, in this apartment and a beautiful um, open living space. So I'm out there most of the time. This, this here um, is sort of like only for getting ready in, in the morning and the night time. So I don't mind so much. Some people might find it a little bit sort of imposing in the room, but, for me, it's really not an issue. Um, I guess it just depends, you know. But if you enjoy telling people about it as much as I do, I sometimes um, would say I even leave the door open so <laughs> so people might see it. Um, but you know, that's that's just it, really. I guess um, in terms of any any issues or um, anything. So um, yeah, we'll have a quick look at the temperature. So that's that's dropped. I think about eight degrees. I think it was twenty nine. I can't remember the. The point it was but it was 29 so um yeah that the i'll show you where it is it's just in here the thermometer um yeah you can see it's it's definitely cooling um, it definitely has a cooling ability there um so yeah anyway um that is it i hope you've enjoyed this i will monitor the comments um of the video so if anyone has any questions feel free to um put a comment down there and i'll try and answer it um yeah, I just, I guess I just really want to say I do really enjoy this product. Um, I really, really love it. I would say if this one was to break or something like that, um, or I couldn't take it to my next, um, you know, destination that I may live, I would probably buy another one. Um, or if there's, you know, improvements to it and that sort of stuff and this one was getting a bit old, I would definitely upgrade. Um, it's something that I think I, I will use um, I don't know, maybe not indefinitely, but for the time being where I, I do like to be a bit more energy conscious um, and that sort of thing, and particularly in a climate in like Darwin where you know you do have to use an air conditioner potentially 365 days of the year. You know, um, I, the place I had it before was down in Adelaide, so obviously you sort of only have a season of hot weather and then, um, you know, you get those really cold winters and that sort of stuff. So um, potentially down in Adelaide or somewhere like that, you wouldn't be using it as much, but um, in Darwin or um, a more northern um, destination in Australia, um, yeah, you could probably use something like this around the year. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, post your questions um, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, and that's it. Excellent.
All right, see you later.